wanted to go over some of the details of the ERD for the Rideshare project. Uh, this is an application that's intended to be uh, a system that lets you sign up for rides to share transportation home from school or for holidays or whatever. And so it kind of orbits around rides and drivers and passengers. So let me start by taking a look at the ride relation here. I'm going to try zooming in here so we can see a little better. Uh, so a ride has uh, a, a primary key that's just an ID value, and that's consistent for this entire database. I'm just using these synthetic primary keys that are just an auto-incrementing integer field. That's kind of a simple way of connecting together the different relations. Uh, so a ride has a date and a time, which is basically the time that the ride departs. It's going to have an associated distance, which is just going to be the approximate duration or the approximate distance of the of the drive and that will be used to for example try to figure out how much the ride might have to cost we're going to have a fuel price for each ride so depending on kind of the region of the country where the ride is going to take place there might be higher or lower fuel prices and we want to be able to figure out how again how much the ride is going to cost and then there might be just some additional fixed fees for the ride so for example if you know you're going to be going on a tollway and you want to charge uh, the passengers on the ride part of the uh, of that fee We'll also, we also see here that uh, there's a couple of foreign keys here that refer to the some locations. So this relation here, location, is, uh, is either the starting point for the ride or the destination for the ride. Again, it's got a primary key that's just an integer, um, a name, so this might be like Sammy Morris or English Hall or whatever and then an address, city, state, and a zip code. So this could be both uh, on-campus locations as well as the final destination, right? You're going to somebody's house, or you're going to a shopping mall in some location, or some other common uh, place where you might want to get uh, dropped off at the end of the ride. And rather than duplicating this location information a bunch of different times, right, presumably um, if this is used, uh, there's going to be a lot of rides that are going to depart from SAMI or from English or from wherever. Uh, and we don't want to duplicate that data. So the idea here is that we'll put those uh, locations in a separate relation, a separate table here, and then we'll refer to them as foreign keys from the ride table itself. Okay. Um, another little piece of bookkeeping here. Uh, rather than typing in the state information directly in the location table, we're going to have a, a table that has just the state abbreviations. Uh, this is right now designed to work just in the United States, so we can uh, simplify some of the design here. Uh, so these will have the this state table should be populated with information about each of the 50 states, and then you can see that there's several other places in the data model where we use this state table. Okay, the other important thing about a ride is there needs to be a vehicle associated with that ride. So that's what's described up here. And you can see there's the other, the remaining foreign key from the ride table that I didn't mention before, this vehicle ID uh, points to a particular vehicle that's going to be used for that ride. And of course this is a one-to-many relationship uh, because a given vehicle might be used on multiple rides. So on the ride end of the relationship is the crow's feet thing here to say that there can be many rides per vehicle but a specific ride is going to only use one vehicle hence the the one at this end of the relation so a vehicle again has primary key <clears throat> then a make and a model which might be like ford f-150 or hyundai santa fe then a color uh, which could be just an arbitrary string in this case. Then we have a vehicle type. So here's um, a foreign key to a, another table that's just going to kind of be a lookup table that might be like pickup truck, SUV, uh, coupe, van, whatever it is, the type of vehicle. This is mostly just kind of to help people figure out which car or which vehicle they're going to be riding in when they show up for the for to, to depart on the ride. We're going to keep track of the capacity of that vehicle, how many passengers it can hold, and that's going to be important for us to make sure that we don't overbook a ride to put too many passengers or drivers in the same vehicle. And then we also want to keep track of the miles per gallon for that vehicle. And again, that can be used to calculate the cost given the fuel price and the distance. And of course, you can split that among the different people who are riding on that, on that uh, ride. 
And then finally, just to make it completely unambiguous which vehicle you're using to go on a particular ride, we'll keep track of the, um, the license plate number, and then that's also going to have a state associated with it. And again, we'll just reuse this state table to get information about those states. All right, let me scoot over to the other side of this. Um, so rides and vehicles are kind of the... The, uh, the core of this application, but then of course we also have to be able to keep track of the people who are involved. So I've created a very general purpose kind of user table here that has, again, the primary key is just an integer sequence number. First name, last name, email, uh, and phone number are just information about a particular user. And then we'll, because the user also needs to be able to kind of authenticate with the system, we'll also store a password in here as well. Um, let me come back to the is admin attribute, but let's just talk about, so, so when you want to use the system, uh, whether you want to ride or you want to drive or whether you're an administrator for the system, you're going to have a, you're going to have an associated user record. Now, when you want to sign up as a passenger for a ride, you'll have to have first um, constructed this user record. Uh, but then uh, once you've logged into the system, you can search for all of the rides that are coming up. And then if you want to participate in one of those rides, you'll be able to use the user interface to say, hey, that's the ride I want to be on, at which point the database will store your interest in that ride by creating this associative table called passenger. So an instance of this passenger table ref con connects together a specific ride by its primary key with a specific user by his or her primary key. So each instance of this table, each row in this table says this user is riding on this ride. Similarly, uh, if you want to sign up to be a driver, um, you're going to do something similar, except it's a little bit more elaborate here because the driver has some constraints placed on his or her uh, use of the system. In particular, a driver needs to be authorized to operate a particular vehicle, and it's only going to be rides that use authorized vehicles for which that driver can sign up. So a user might come in and say, I want to be a driver. They can indicate to the system that that's the case. And when they sign up to be a driver, the system will create an instance of this table or a row in this table. So there's going to be a foreign key that points back to the user information for that user. And they'll also have to supply the system with their driver's license number and the state in which it was issued. And that's a reference to that state table again. Now, at that point, then, um, the driver has, or the user has registered their interest in being a driver, but they haven't yet been authorized to do that. Um, and when we talk about authorization, again, we mean that this driver is authorized to operate this particular vehicle. So if it's a private vehicle, um, you know, maybe the, um, maybe maybe the student who is the driver is the owner of that vehicle or maybe it's their family vehicle that they're authorized to drive we just want to make sure that that information gets put into the system it might also be somebody else's vehicle or maybe a tailor vehicle um, and that's something that needs authorization uh, for the driver to to use so an administrator which is kind of the third role here in in terms of the way that the users interact with the system an administrator is going to have to be uh, involved to create an authorization record which connects a driver to a particular vehicle. So again, this is just a, a, a binary association or associative table that connects a particular driver to a particular vehicle. So if there is a row in this table, it means that that driver is authorized to drive that vehicle. Now, when I talk about an administrative user, that's the purpose of this last attribute of the user table, this is admin. When, that when a user is created, um, they can optionally be granted administrative permission basically by setting that value in the database to be true when their user record is created. So obviously there's going to have to be some code that's going to check to make sure that this particular logged in user actually has permission to do these kinds of tasks, but that's part of the application logic and the server logic that we're not really worried about here in the data model. We just have to be able to support the storage of that information in order for the code to, to do its job. So if a person is an administrative user, they are authorized, <coughs> excuse me, they are authorized to create one of these authentic or authorization records to say this driver can drive 
that vehicle. Now, once that is in place, if a ride gets created that uses that vehicle, then at a later point, that's that driver who's uh, signed up to be a driver and is now authorized can then sign up to be a driver on the particular ride. And if, uh, if they do that, we're going to have the database store that information by creating an instance of this driver uh, record. So an instance of this table is going to say this particular driver is interested in driving this particular ride. And that's going to, of course, require that they're authorized for the vehicle that's going to be used on this particular ride. So there's going to have to be some, some logic in there in the application again to ensure that that's the case before a driver is allowed to sign up to drive on a particular ride. And that's the structure of the database for the rideshare application.